Welcome everyone to another edition of the Prince George's County Public Schools Update. I'm Grant Kittleson. As the school year gets ready to come to a close, we take a look at a number of new beginnings that began with some golden shovels and some dirt. Here's Dave Zarin with the story. One, two, three. Looking good. With hard hats on and shovels in hand, school and government officials have been breaking ground recently for new and repaired schools at a furious pace. Destined to rise soon are a new Hyattsville Area Elementary School, a new Akakeek Academy, a renovated Doswell Brooks Elementary with plenty of additions, a brand new auditorium for Crossland High School, and a retaining wall to make the current Hyattsville Elementary both safer and greener. Combined with three previous groundbreakings for a new Oxen Hill High, a new Greenbelt Middle, and a new Avalon Elementary, it is a heady time for a school system with a long list of infrastructural needs. We've made tremendous progress academically, Dave. Now we're also making tremendous progress against the projects that have been backlogged for years that where we have repairs that are so desperately needed. And while we have had three ground break-ins this week, we also had quite a few ground break-ins several months ago, with the new high school, a new middle school, a new elementary school. And then we're looking forward to more ground break-ins in the very near future. With neighborhood concerns addressed, funds secured and government hurdles cleared, the dirt One, two, is flying, three. at least symbolically, as long dreamt of bigger, brighter, and more environmentally and technologically friendly classrooms begin to take shape. Whitehall Elementary School continues to celebrate, and why not when you're the recipient of a prestigious award? Here's Dave Zarin again with the story as Whitehall hosted some Blue Ribbon guests. Whitehall Elementary's version of Take Me Out to the Ball Game was, like just about everything else the Bowie School does, a home run. Celebrating the school's selection as one of only six Maryland Blue Ribbon schools and the only one in Prince George's County, students crowded into the school's lunchroom recently to hear how their academic achievements are earning national attention, a gold medal for their principal, and plenty of school supplies, and yes, a pizza party for them. The last time we were here, Whitehall students, we talked about what a big deal this was. This is. Did you get it? Yes! Is this a big deal? Yes! Don't you think your principal should have a blue ribbon medallion? Yes! What's, what does this blue ribbon mean to you? I mean, we've come to all these rallies and everything. Do you talk about it afterwards or beforehand? What's this all about? To me, it means like that we've succeeded in what we've done and that we've done our best. That's what blue, the Blue Ribbon Award means to me. You must be awfully proud to be in a school that is being lionized like this. Very proud. It means a lot to be considered for Blue Ribbon status and to earn that award this year because we've been working very hard with our students. We work with the community members and the parents, so it, it does mean a lot to us to achieve that award this year. Continued good luck to Whitehall, a school through both scholarship and song proclaims loudly and proudly who they are. Whitehall Elementary School, just one of a few schools to receive that Blue Ribbon Award. At the Special Olympics, everyone gets an award, whether it be a medal or a ribbon. Here's Dave again with the uplifting story. Yeah. 
there was no mistaking the identity of the young racers at the Sports and Learning Center track in Landover recently. All that excitement and all that courage could only mean that it was Prince George's challenged youngsters back to do battle at the 68th annual Special Olympics. On a beautiful day on an equally beautiful field, hundreds of youngsters from 56 different schools competed in a dozen track and field events, including the long jump, the shot put, and foot races with and without assistance. And while medals were awarded to the top finishers, not a single student was anything less than a winner. All of the challenges that these students have are overlooked while we look at their ability and what they can do. And that's what's exciting about today. You're a true Olympian. Yes, I am. Right. Are you proud of this guy? We're very proud of him. Everybody's out here a winner. There was sheer joy when beaming parents showered their athletes in hugs and pride. <laughs> Despite all the attention on them, one student, Anya Carter, turned the tables and gave her medal to her mom as a birthday present. Yet another student, Kennedy Yule, was delighted to learn that the people taking notice of her and all the Special Olympians weren't limited to those in attendance. Congratulations, you don't have just one, but you've got two ribbons. What did you win? I won the, the run, the run, the run, 50 meter dash, and the standing long jump. Thank you. Is this on the news? Yeah, you are, you are worthy of being on the news. We're gonna put you on. How's that make you feel? Good. <laughs> Good indeed. For what better story is there than watching challenged children beating the odds and thus winning our hearts. We started this update with some new beginnings for schools. We wrap it up with some information on how to get your child started in our school system. Registration for kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, and the preschool opportunity program is now open. If your child turns five years old by September 1st of 2012, they are eligible to enroll in kindergarten and should go to their Boundary Elementary School to register. For pre-kindergarten, registration will be at Boundary Schools through June 1st if your child turns four years old by September 1st of this year. After June 1st, families can register at any elementary school on a space available basis. This is an income eligible program. No above income children will be accepted. In addition, transportation will only be provided to students attending their Boundary School. The preschool opportunity program is for children two or three years old. The child must be two or three by September 1st and demonstrate typical development. Registration is at all early childhood centers. Only income eligible families will be accepted through June 1st. After June 1, all families who meet the age requirement may register regardless of income on a space available basis. If your child does not demonstrate typical development or may have developmental delays, contact the Preschool Child Find Office at 301-808-2719. That's going to do it for this edition of the PGCPS Update. For Dave Zarin, I'm Grant Kittleson. We'll see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.